later. I'll do that at another time. Procrastination is destruction. It is a deception of shaitan. Act on your knowledge. Don't procrastinate. Don't leave it to say your prayers. Don't leave it to approach Allah and get closer to Allah. Don't leave it to get that obligatory knowledge that you have. No. Act on your knowledge, brothers and sisters. And this is how we found the Sahaba. This is how we found the companions of the Prophet. There is a narration, I don't remember the names of the companions involved, but one of them, there is a battle, a jihad taking place, a battle. And one of the companions asks another of the companions, oh such and such, is it true that the Prophet ﷺ said that if I die fighting in the path of Allah, I will go to paradise? He says, yes, that is true. I heard the Prophet ﷺ say that. So he was eating some dates, he threw them away, and he went and fought and, and died. SubhanAllah, benefits in this small narration. First of all, he had some idea that there was a saying of the Prophet ﷺ. But you know what he wanted to do? He wanted to authenticate it. He wanted to make sure that this really was from the Messenger. Let me see, did Muhammad ﷺ really say this? Is this really from the deen? And once he found out and once he realized, yes, this is from the deen, what did he do? He went and acted on it. He didn't procrastinate. He didn't sit there saying, oh yes, thank you, that's very interesting. Now let me see what else I can do. Now, and a lot of people are like that, brothers and sisters. People want to come and ask me questions. And as I was giving this talk, it came to my mind, and I'm not going to mention anyone specifically, but people come and ask me questions, oh brother, do you think such and such and this and that is in my life, do you think I should happen? Uh, uh, do you think I should do this or what do you think I should do? Now some things, it's a matter of, it's a matter of it's jihad, it's a matter of interpretation. In fact, very often people know their own situation better than I could ever know it. But sometimes there is a clear sharia ruling that no, this is haram. This is forbidden. Now, I wonder how many people who come to me and ask me a question and I say, no, this is haram. A sister may ask me, I have a husband, he doesn't pray, he doesn't practice, he's committed adultery. From the opinion and the understanding what I know is that a person who commits adultery has to divorce his wife. It is haram for them to remain married. It is haram. Has to divorce his wife. So now you've asked the question, you've got the answer, now act on it. Do I have to wear hijab? The proof is this and this. Do I have to grow my beard? The proof is this and this. Act on it. Don't procrastinate. Because if you leave it, you'll leave it and leave it. And believe me, it'll get harder and harder to do it. Anyone ever did, did anyone ever do any high diving? Did anyone? Any, any no. <laughs> okay. Well, I used to do high diving. When I was young, I used to do high diving. And they used to have this board, I don't know how high it was, it was high. Maybe, I don't know, 20 meters, it was very high. And we used to, me and my brother and my friends, we, there were actually three boards. There was a little bouncy board, that was easy, bouncy, bouncy, splosh, okay. Then you had the other one, okay, that was about, you know, maybe that was a, a 5 meter, 12 meter board, I don't remember. And that had a bouncy board on it as well. It was very easy just to jump off the concrete bit. If you had a bit more guts, you'd bounce off the bouncy bit. Okay? But then the other board, boy, that was high. That was high up. Okay? And you look at it and you'd spend half an hour looking at it and say, yeah, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. It's not that far. It's not that far. So eventually, you walk up, you get up there, and then you walk to the edge, and believe me, everyone looks like little ants crawling around. And then not only do you look down on the pool, because the pool is clear, you look down to the bottom of the pool, which of course is another 10 meters, right? And suddenly you think you're up in space. And you're thinking, if I, if I move this way or that way, my back is going to split open, it's going to hurt for a week. And believe me, the more you look, and the longer you look, the harder it gets. And the time you usually do it is when you walk up, you know, you know, you know what you have to do. You walk up, you stand on the edge, you look up, and you just... You, well, you don't jump, actually. You, you, know, you let yourself fall and you dive. 
That's when you'll do it. But you know when you procrastinate, most of the time you'll chicken out and you know what? Everyone is looking at you. They're all looking at you. Is he going to jump? He's gone up. You know what they're seeing? Everyone's going, is he going to do it? And then you chicken out and you walk down and goes, oh, you know. Like that. And you have, to, you, have to, you have to take the embarrassment of walking all the way back down and bouncing off the bouncy board. In fact, in fact, when you, in fact, even when you chicken out of the top one, you don't even have the guts anymore to do the second one. You have to go back to the little bouncy board, board on the bottom. Really. And it's true. And that's true for a lot of things. A lot of actions. And that's what happens when we procrastinate. Sure, sometimes you think about it, you calculate it, and you still do it. But most of the time, it doesn't work like that. So actions is what we need. Actions which are sincere, and actions that are based on knowledge, that ha are based on a clear understanding of the Sharia. Now there's one final thing I want to talk about. There's one final thing that I want to talk about. And that is really the actual title. Actions speak louder than words. I want to spend just a little bit of time reminding ourselves of something. That it is much more often the things that we do rather than the things that we say that affect people. And the history of Islam bears testimony to that, brothers and sisters. The history of Islam. From Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to his sahaba, to those people who spread Islam, our pious predecessors, who spread Islam across the face of this earth. And it still holds true today. We find that actions speak louder than words. Remember the incident? We all know the story of the Jewish woman who used to throw rubbish on the Prophet ﷺ when he lived in Mecca. We all know that story. How the Prophet ﷺ, every day he went out of his house, she would wait for him and throw rubbish, throw rubbish and throw rubbish. One day Rasulullah ﷺ walks out of his house, goes down, Wait a minute, I didn't get my usual delivery today. I mean, that maybe didn't, that's not what he thought, but something like that because he didn't get thrown with rubbish. But this is Rasulullah. What did he think? Now, I know what we would think dirty Yahudi kafir dog. Khabith. Huh? I hope she's dead. It's us. Yeah? Huh? This is us, okay? No, Rasulullah saw some hamlah, he wasn't like us. Rasulullah was concerned about his neighbor. And we know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and told us about the rights of our neighbor. In fact, Jibreel used to tell Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the rights of the neighbor so much, he thought that Allah was going to reveal that the neighbor should share in inheritance. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a person who cared about people, even his enemies. He cared about them and he loved and desired and hoped and prayed that they would be guided to Islam. So what did he do? He went to inquire about this woman, to see whether she was well, to see whether he, she was okay. Is there anything that he could do for her? He is her neighbor. When she heard about this, she said, this is truly the character of a prophet of God. أَشْحَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَّهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَشْحَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولُ This is actions, speaking louder than words. This behavior, this character, this nobility of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did something which preaching and words and talking could never do and could never accomplish. 
And believe me, if we study this